I started my first internship two years ago. During these two years, I stumbled, failed, learned, and eventually converted one of my internships into a full-time position at a Fortune 30 company. I thought my life was all going to be perfect once I landed a full-time job at a great company, but I got into deep depression soon after. My name is Jenny Wang, and today I summarized all that I learned in the past two years from my internship and my full-time job. I want to share these valuable experiences with you for your internship or your first full-time job that I wish I knew if I could start over, so that you could stand on my shoulders, get off to a great start, and do better than your peers. Tip number one: Be appreciative of everything you do. You might be wondering why I've placed such an emphasis on this as my number one tip. Here's the thing: you're either in college or a recent graduate, and right now everything ahead might seem like a fantasy for you. It is incredibly common for new graduates to assume they will land their dream job right away, earn fantastic salary, and do projects that they're deeply passionate about. However, The harsh reality often turns out to be quite the opposite. You might have set your sights on a Fortune 500 company, only to find yourself at a local startup. You might love the idea of conducting data analysis to inform major business decisions, yet find yourself stuck with the daily data entry tasks. And despite working hard in school and feeling that only a six-figure salary would justify your hard working, you might start with barely half of that. Now you feel defeated. You've lost all the passion at work. You've started to hate your job, and your life became miserable. So please, please, please know that you will definitely reach your dream job, but you had to start somewhere. Think of it as if you're building your own ladder right now. Everything you learn every day is going to be an invaluable and essential material that you definitely need for your ladder. This letter will eventually take you to wherever you want to be. How to cultivate gratitude? For example, as for me, I really, really appreciate that my manager hired me for such an amazing position right out of school, and trust me to work on many high-profile projects. So I'm very excited to go to work every day. Here, I also listed something that you could appreciate for. Tip number two: Set the important mindset that your lack of experience is actually your advantage. You got your offer, and now you're worried about your lack of experience because it's your first job. The truth might surprise many, but starting from scratch as a blank paper, without preconceived notions or stereotypes of how tasks should be accomplished, actually allows you to adapt more fluidly to new environments. If you don't believe this, Think about why MBB prefers new graduate college students instead of people who have professional working experiences. For managers, a great entry-level employee is not the one who can bring previous experiences, but the one who can pick up tasks quickly and help the team to reach the goal. Each company and each team works so differently from what they do and how they approach problems. Without any prior experiences, you can directly absorb information that you learned from your team and implement it without needing to change your old habits. So go to work with full confidence because you have more advantages than senior level people. Tip number three: Reset. When I just started my first job. I was so nervous every day about every single project. What if I don't know how to use this tool? What if people are disappointed in me? What if I'm just not enough for this position? Or what if I couldn't finish this project? Not only did I work so hard every minute, but also I couldn't stop thinking about my projects after work. Even in my dreams, I was still analyzing some data. Soon after, I developed anxiety and I started to have rashes all over my body. That's when I learned why work-life balance is so important. If you lose your balance, you're not going to have a life, and it's going to affect your work soon after. So always reset after work. There are several reset methods that works very well for me. Work out for an hour right after I get out of work. 
cook a nice dinner for myself, or take a hot bath. Find your own way. Try not to think about work when you're not at work. Always put yourself first because you can only perform well at work when you have a life. Tip number four: project visibility. This is something that entry-level employees usually don't think about much, but having visibility is so important for your career. Okay, what does visibility actually mean? It could be a lot of things. Projects that tie directly to company's OKR or goals. Projects that involve many senior-level teammates or executives. New projects that nobody has ever done before, and so many more. Working on high visibility projects not only gets you to work with important high-level stakeholders, clients, but also trains your skills much quicker. Plus, it's a crucial part of promotion. Tip number five: taking initiatives. This tip is extremely useful, especially if you're currently an intern and want to convert your internship into a full-time position. Or if you desire a quicker promotion, a good employee completes the projects that are assigned to them, but a great employee starts new project on their own. When you are working on daily tasks, always think about if there is a way to make it better. There are a couple of questions you can use as a guidance. Can you set up any automations for this process? Can you improve the efficiency by introducing new tools to your team? Can you provide a better level of result than what you were originally asked for? If you initiate and own so many new products or projects, you will soon become an irreplaceable part of your team. Tip number six: Be resourceful. Being resourceful at work mainly means you know where to look for help and where to get information that you need. For example. You should reach out to the company's tech support for your technical issues, such as account, devices, etc. And for certain questions, you should reach out to the teammates who are really good at these skills, such as coding, SQL, Excel, etc. For requirements gathering, you should know which stakeholders to connect with. As you can tell, if you know where and who to reach out for your different questions, you won't bother your manager too much. So that you're going to be very likable by managers who always know how to get problems and questions fixed. The last tip: find your life purpose. This purpose should not relate to your job. As we know, companies lay off and employees switch jobs all the time. Think about who you are without your job title. If you can't think of anything, then you need to find your life purpose. I would like to list several possibilities. Your purpose could be a side hustle that could eventually lead to continuous passive income, such as investing, being a content creator, being a career coach, etc. Your purpose could also be your hobby, such as being a photographer, dog worker, football player, etc. Your purpose could also simply be to keep reading and learning new skills to make a better yourself. Having a life purpose is like having a job insurance, so that if by any chance you get laid off by a company, you won't be too panicked because you have this insurance, and you will have another support both mentally and financially to help you to get over this laid off period. These seven tips are not just strategies for success in your first job, but are foundational principles for a fulfilling career and life. Please comment below on what other content you want to see in my next videos. See you next time.